that was it. The engine was running. I'm going to show you how I got it together here. The DLE 222 engine just arrived. Time to unbox it. I removed these first layers of foam and under it we have the manual, some stickers, and then this looks like the exhaust uh, manifolds if I had to take a guess. Here's the next layer down. We have the engine, the ignition system, the spark plugs. I'll be honest, this box and this engine, they're incredibly light for the amount of horsepower they put out. 21 and a half horsepower. Here's everything all spread out on the ground. The first thing that strikes me is that this is a very beautiful engine. Um, took it out of the bag. Just nice looking all aluminum construction for the most part. I mean for the cylinders and everything. You can turn this by hand, the main shaft here, and actually see the cylinders go up and down. See the pistons go up and down. These are magnetic sensors here for the timing. And there's a little magnet in here. There's one, well here's, a sen here's the top sensor and then there's also a bottom sensor. And there's a little magnet right here. The engine by itself weighs about 10 and a half pounds. 0.39, I wonder if it's millimeters. 10 millimeter shaft. Here's the throttle lever. This is controlled by a servo via linkage down here. Sturdy aluminum plate on the back. Here's the manual. They recommend using Loctite for screws and nuts so things don't vibrate loose. Here's the technical data. You can optionally put a tachometer on. Engine adjustment for the carburetor. Engine start. Engine maintenance. Here's the contact info. It also came with this little piece of paper here saying that oil may leak and you can apply high temperature silicone, it looks like here as a gasket. Here are the spark plugs. One thing that amazes me about this engine is that it puts out over 20 horsepower, but it's less than 13 inches long, it's like 12 and a half inches long from the tip of the shaft here to the end of the screw here on this mount. 12 and a half inches long. It's about, it's less than 11 inches wide. And it's like seven inches tall. I printed out this manual last night. It's made by Habico here. 
and uh, it's about 20 pages long. It's much more in-depth than the manual that came with it. So, downloaded this. This I'll put the link to this in the description along with any other resources. There's a bunch of other videos on this engine that I'll uh, put the links to as well. I've built this testing cart here. I'm going to test the thrust later. But um, this is made out of scrap aluminum and steel I had laying around. The engine here, um, here I'm going to show you something. So when I turn the shaft, you're going to see these are in pairs. So there's a, there's a front pair and there's a rear pair of pistons. So these are going to go out and in together and same with these. All right, so that's important because we want to fire these two together and we want to fire these two together. So the sensor, the top sensor here is for the front two. So to make this a little bit more clear, this sensor here runs back and then I labeled this F. All right, this is going to go to the control module here. And then the one underneath, lower one here is going to run back to another control module right now I don't have it plugged in all right so then these two these are going to have spark plugs they're going to run up to these two cylinders and then the rear are going to be paired here and here come from this direction this would be facing this way counterclockwise so I went counterclockwise. Here we come here. We trigger here. We just past top dead center, and then poof. I had this 12 volt battery laying around. I'm going to use this for the test rig. Got this kill switch here. Um, one thing that surprises me is I have this powered on here, but there's no like power on LED. This is kind of cheapo, in my opinion. Um, like, you, you should at least have some kind of little power on light here. Um, I'm tempted to just open this thing up. I think it's probably just like a transformer or something pretty simple in here. Also, the spark plugs just pop out of here so easily. Like, yeah, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of this spark plug harness setup. Really, this should, yeah, just like, yeah. I might have to secure it somehow. The spark plug setup is pretty terrible because if the spark plug pops out and falls to the ground, it can bend the little part that takes the spark, and then your gap is going to change. So I measured the, uh, the gap of a new one. It's about... It's around 0.02 inches. One of them I dropped. I'm going to have to bend it back a little bit right here. The good news is they all, oh uh, well, the good news is they both spark. I turned the lights off to make this uh, more visible. The magnets here, it's going to pass by the sensor, and when that happens, it's going to go to that ignition module, which then is going to send the high voltage to the spark plug and spark these both at once. So here we go, I'm going to turn this. Same with this one over here. One interesting thing to note is that Tower Hobbies has some great info. It has this exploded view PDF here. And at first I was like, well, where are the descriptions for each of the numbers and then I realized if you go to the website each of these numbers I'll zoom in a bit here um, DLEG2201 okay so the last two digits correspond to here so 01 is this like propeller plate here and then 0, 05 is the crankcase 
z is 0, 5, so on and so forth. I got annoyed at these spark plug caps uh, falling off, so I drilled a little hole through here and then wired them, wired this here so it doesn't fall off. The propeller just arrived. It's a 30 by 10 propeller. I'm going to attach it here. Use some thread locker. This was recommended in the manual. And then I have some double sided sticky tape here for these, the ignition modules and the battery here. The prop weighs 11 ounces. Some more parts arrived. Here's the fuel tank, some hose, some T's. I'll put the parts in the description. The fuel lines are attached to the carburetors. And to see how things work a little bit better, I decided to take the ends off because it's hard to get to the middle, but the ends are accessible. So this is what it looks like inside here. We have these little flaps, this seal, it's all fairly complicated. I mean, carburetors are fairly simple, but at the same time, they're also complicated. So, we have the fuel coming in here to this little chamber. And then you can see all kinds of stuff going on in here. This hole here, that's a screen. So the fuel is filtered here. And then it goes through this channel over to the other side of the carburetor. And here's what it looks like on the other side of the carburetor. That fuel comes out here, which I'm assuming is a little valve. And then the fuel ultimately is going to go through this little pinhole here. Now before it does that, there's this little diaphragm. And this is going to go here it's going to move back and forth actually I got it flipped around here it's going to go back and forth this little thing here is going to pump it it looks like back and forth and then the fuel is going to travel through this little injector nozzle ultimately ending up going through this little brass piece here into the Venturi, this little brass thing sticking out here, into the Venturi, also known as the barrel of the carburetor. Then up top here you got the choke, down here you got the throttle, and then these two little screws here for the high and low engine RPMs. These are the fuel adjust, you can even see here the little H, and there's a little L down here too. I have two gallons of 91 octane gasoline in here mixed with this Lawn Boy oil. What's needed here is it even tells you how much you need. So for two gallons, eight ounces, which is one of these containers. So I put in just under one container for two gallons in here. Turned it blue, so I turned the gas blue. This is a 360 milliliter fuel bottle it's halfway filled so that's 360 milliliters uh, 12 ounces so this is about six ounces of fuel the new blade is on I'll show you a quick video of the old one when it was crashed into the ground I had this running before but unfortunately this whole thing here toppled over like this and at the time I forgot to put on these this is all on tracks here this is the stopper and this is able to run on tracks so I'm gonna use this to measure uh, this test stand to measure the amount of thrust this can generate but there's wheels on the other side here that keep this on track and uh, I was amazed. This this thing's heavy. This probably weighs 20 pounds. This weighs 20 pounds. I mean, this is at least 20 pounds. 
This thing's cantilevered though, and the whole thing toppled over and the propeller hit the grass. <sighs> so I got a new propeller. And to be extra safe, I've added these outriggers for stability. To start this, I'm going to have the chokes down, closed. And then, let me get fuel to it. I'll, I might tilt this tank to get some more fuel to it. Otherwise, I'll just turn this. It'll actually suck the fuel in. Then when I notice it start to catch, I'll open up the chokes a bit. And give it a go. Alright, starting to fire. Choke fully closed. Throttle fully closed. I had been cranking away at this thing for hours the other day to the point where my arm got sore and I noticed that this back cylinder was firing pretty hot and working but these were not working uh, up front and today I found that this had become disconnected I guess when this whole thing toppled over and uh, that's why it was such a struggle so I'm going to give this thing a shot again and I think it's going to kick off and work this time. I also rechecked the spark here and everything looks aligned here. It didn't fall that hard. It was mostly the propeller that took the shock and hit the grass, but kind of like slowly toppled. I also got these nice clips. I'll put the link in the description. Fuel was leaking down here and hopefully that's fixed now. The tank is around three-eighths of the way full here. Let's see how long it'll run on idle. This thing burns through fuel pretty quick. We got down here in about two or three minutes just at idle. Even with these wires here to help secure the spark plug uh, harnesses, this one still popped off when it was running. I'm going to have to figure out a better way. Maybe I can tighten this down a little more. Nice and warm. pretty well. Didn't put it in full throttle, but uh, produces quite a bit of thrust. I'll try to measure it, hopefully next time. Thanks for watching.